Bell. Hello everybody. Welcome back to Cheap Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And we are somewhere in the end of March here. Not really sure what day it is, but I'll put it in the title like I always do. Anyway, looking at some Harbor Freight solar panels. This is the 100 watt set. And you can see three of them are cracked. Well, that happened uh, earlier this year. Well, actually, uh, later last year, the, the end, towards the end of last year, in a windstorm, it actually, uh, I had it nailed down with um, those uh, metal stakes and held into place so it wouldn't go anywhere. And the wind came from its normal direction, caught underneath that, flipped it over, slammed it on the ground, and broke three of the glasses. But, believe it or not, they're still working. It's still working just fine. You can see the wires are right now running up over the top and they they tie into a single wire and then they go inside. And that one has its own wires going inside. And we'll go inside in a little while and I'll show you the uh, controllers that the, those are hooked up to. They're, they're side by side inside of the battery room. This is the other set, four of them. They're 25 watts each, 100 watts for the whole set. Yeah, I got two other sets up there. Now these are amorphous panels, so they work in very low light. So I got that 100, 200, 300, 400. And then up on the top of the um, electric room up there, I've got 75 watts because it's missing one of these panels because I used it for something else. And then over there, I've got the old Harbor Freight panels and they're still amorphous panels. But those are the old ones, those are 15 watts each, so that's 45 watts. So with uh, the 45 and the uh, 75, that's up on top there, that's, uh, what, 120? So I get 120 watts up there instead of 100. So anyway, um, Old Path, uh, one of my uh, avid followers and uh, viewers, uh, just bought a set of these and I promised him today that I would do a, uh, an update on it to help him along understanding a little bit more about solar and how they work. Okay, now, uh, if you've read the uh, manual on these, you do not ever hook these uh, Harbor Freight panels in series. Okay, you cannot connect them in series that by going positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and then having a positive or a negative on this side and a positive on that side and using those to go inside. That increases the voltage, not the amps. So the amps would stay the same, but your voltage would go up. Okay, now I'm not absolutely sure why they say you can't do that um, because the, these panels, I am pretty sure, excuse me, unlike the other panels I've got around here, um, the older panels or the other panels like those, the 100 watt panels, those have a big box attached to the back side of them. And inside that box, they have diodes. And what a diode does is it, it uh, allows a power flow to only go in one direction. And the reason that's important is because if you don't have diode protection on solar panels, then they go inside, the power goes in when the sun's out, goes into your controller, and then after the sun goes down, if you don't have a diode to stop the reverse flow, then the batteries are gonna uh, try to power up the um, solar panels, gonna try to send power back to them, as if they're a light of some type, okay? So it'll draw your batteries down after sunset. So you've got to have a diode in there so that it won't do that. That protects backflow of electricity. Now these panels, so the Harbor Freight panels, the diodes are put inside of the controller, not in the panels. I'm not absolutely 100% sure of that because I haven't torn any apart because all the ones I have are still working. Those, uh, 45 watt systems up there. I've got uh, two of those up on the roof of my motorhome over there that have been on there now for, 
oh my God, I'd have to say at least 15 years and they're still working fine. And these uh, were bought around the same period of time. I used to have those on my tool shed back when I lived in the OC. And uh, I brought all of that stuff up here. So, hey, you know, it, I just tie them in and let them keep on uh, putting power in and they still work. So those have been around a long time. All right, so anyway, um, going back to the, this 100 watt system. So they, they have their own um, four to one connector groups. And that's what that thing hanging right there is, okay? So it's got four of these wires going into it and then they all go into that block and then one wire goes out and goes inside of the um, battery room. So let's move around here. These are also amorphous. So these are 305 watts each and it looks like they need cleaning because we did have some rain last night or early this morning. Um, it woke me up. I heard the pitter patter of rain on the roof and I said, oh, it's raining out of there. Of course, it wasn't even enough to register anything in my rain gauge. So it wasn't really a, a, a good rain. So anyway, we're gonna come inside here now. And these are the two controllers up here. And you see the one that's, e even the one that's broken um, is still putting the same amount of power out as the other one. All right, so they're both identical. All right, now one of the things I mentioned was this is the type of connector that comes with the system. It just plugs into that opening right there. And it says right below it, solar input, okay? But you look down here and there's the solar panels. So this is the solar, where the solar goes in. So what I did was I cut that end off. I separated the two wires a little bit. And then how do you find out which one is positive and which one is negative? Well, you're going to need a voltmeter like this, okay? So you're gonna put this on DC 20 volts or DC 200 is even safer. Put it on DC 200, okay? So you have that plugged into your solar panels or that's coming from your solar panels. And um, all you have to do is take the positive and negative probes on this and put them across the two wires on your gauge. If a little uh, black dot shows up on there and the, it, it's not showing the proper voltage or it says minus, you got your wires reversed. Switch them around and read it again and it should come out and give you the voltage of those panels. All right, so, so when you got that in the right position, record which one the red is connected to. And I use a little piece of red shrink tubing and I put that around the, the positive side so if I ever take it apart, I remember what side is positive. And then it's always good if you um, have the equipment to do so is uh, to get some uh, solder for wire, which is a rosin core so solder and solder the ends of them uh, so that they're they're hard little ends because if you try putting them behind those screws with just the uh, uh, I'm sorry, the stranded wire that they, they come in. If you just try putting the stranded wire in there, the screw is going to crush the wire, break some of the strands, and you're not going to get a good contact. So soldering them is, is a good bet. Okay. Now another thing you can do if you can't don't have a soldering iron is you can use a um, a crimp fitting and uh, I keep some crimp fittings around here now you might have to modify one like this to work but what you can do is you're gonna have to file down or grind down the two sides of it so it's just wide enough to fit inside there then you can crimp that onto the end of your wire and stick that up inside and that'll give you a good connection all right so some important um, things to remember when you buy any, any solar panels with controllers, battery banks, 
and all of that set. Now you don't just buy a solar set with a controller and think that you're going to hook that up directly to whatever you're going to power. You've got to have a battery bank. You've got to have at least one 12 volt battery. Now I'm using six volt batteries so I use two of them tied together in series. Remember I told you in series voltage goes up, amps stay the same. So I got these tied in, in series which is uh, positive to negative of, of the, the two batteries. That turns this into a 12 volt battery. These two are now a 12 volt battery. This would be the positive pole and this would be the negative pole over here. Okay, so always hook your battery up to the controller first. Very, very, very important. Battery hooks to the controller first. Battery disconnects from the controller last. So if you can take the system down, take, take your solar panel wires out first, and then take your battery wires out. The reason for that is these controllers have a computer board inside of them, and the computer board is set up with the, the way they build these things to read the voltage of your battery bank. So Harbor Freight panels cannot be used for a 24-volt system. you got to use those for a 12-volt system. Okay, so you can't, you, you can't multiply them and go from uh, uh, 12, 24 to uh, 48 to uh, whatever up the line. Uh, 20, 12, 24, 36, 48. So you're going to have to use a 12-volt battery system with the Harbor Freight set. Okay, that's one of their limitations. That's a, one of the problems that uh, they're not I ideal for off-grid if you're going to use higher voltage systems. I've got a 12-volt system, so I'm not worried about it. They're just a nice little backup. All right? Now, they do sell a round wheel type uh, unit that you can buy at Harbor Freight. So instead of having to have multiple controllers for the panels that you have outside, you can put the, uh, the wheel in there and you can plug, I think it's up to six, four or six sets into that and then go into your controller with one connector. Okay, so um, that may be an option for you if you're just setting up a small system for yourself just to run a few items in case of a power outage or something like that. Now remember one thing, solar panels are only good when the sun is out. So don't think that this is going to be a good backup system for a power outage if you're on grid. Um, it'll only work to give you some power during the day. And most likely at 12 volts, the only thing you're going to be running is maybe some lights. <laughs> so it's, you don't need lights during the day. So it's not a good backup system for... Um, if there's a problem with your on-grid uh, power systems going out all the time. All right, so we got that part put away. So you always connect the batteries first. That tells the controller what voltage your system is. Then you hook your panels up and the panels will start charging the battery. All right, so remember that. Now there are settings on here. And depending on what type of battery you use, you're going to have to change the settings. So number one, you press the, uh, the bottom button here. The top one is your auxiliary button. If you have a set of lights tied in here or into something plugged into one of those, these are 12 volt outputs. So you're going to press and hold this button until the numbers start flashing. Okay, now this is saying you, I'm using flooded batteries. So if I had to change that, you, have, you can change it to whatever type of battery you're using. You have to press and hold that button again. So let's do that. We'll get it to the battery. And then you press and hold it again until they flash. Okay, at that point, you can keep pressing the button and it'll change through the different batteries. Okay, so once you get it the way you want it, you press and hold it. And that sets it into place. Now this is going through the, the different voltages that it's set for. Uh, 
uh, the 12.6 is when it would actually send to the um, auxiliary output. This is what's coming in right now. If I go to the next one, 14.6, that's the, the maximum that it would go before it goes to float. All right, so then at uh, uh, 13.8 is what it would normally run at. Okay, so 10.8 is the bottom, the lowest that it would allow it to go before it shuts off and doesn't allow any more uh, drain to the uh, batteries. All right, and there's your 12.6 again and back to the normal. So, um, setting up your controller, the bottom button, you got to make sure you, your battery is hooked up first before you can do that because it won't run without the battery. But your battery always hooks up first. And I don't care if you're using those controllers, these controllers. This is a PWM. Those are MPPTs. Okay. Um, these types of controllers, these are MPPTs, but these are top end. These are great. Um, this one cost me 750 bucks. It's a Midnight Classic 150. I've seen a, a Midnight Classic 200. Or, or yeah, 200, I think it was, on eBay for um, 549. So I may buy one of those um, when the money comes in, and uh, use that to control my um, my wind turbine. Okay, so the wind's not blowing hard enough right now to make any electricity here. But oh, there it is, 27 watts, 60 watts, 62 watts. So. The wind gusts are go coming and going right now, and we're not supposed to have any wind today, but they are. So this is telling me amp hours, volts max, uh, watt hours, amps peak, and watts peak. So the, the, the top watts that that um, turbine has put out and the winds out here is 954.7. So 955 watts total. All right, so... I've got a disconnected wire here. Why is that? That's not supposed to be disconnected. All right. So, anyway, um, I wanted to cover all of that for you so that you uh, don't mess up on that controller. Now, one last thing. And it shouldn't have been last. It should have been right up in front. Don't connect your solar panels under load. Don't disconnect your solar panels under load. That means if the sun is shining on them and they're putting out power, that's not a good time to connect or disconnect them. At that point, you want to cover them with the cardboard boxes that they came in so that they, the sun can't get to them and then make your connections. All right? Make your connections or disconnections either way. So make sure that you don't connect your panels or disconnect your panels under load. Make sure you always connect your batteries first. Very important stuff. And then other than that, have fun and enjoy. Now those little USB ports out there, they're great for charging your cell phone and that kind of stuff. The other ones, the little ones are uh, 12 volt. If you're out camping and you got a, forgot your radio running inside your vehicle and the uh, battery has run a little bit low, you can take one of the little plug-ins that go in there with the alligator clips on the end and clip that onto the battery and let the sun recharge your battery of your vehicle so you can start it up and get out of there. All right, that's all for today, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks for joining me. G-Bear signing off.